Hi everyone, it's Winnie from Asian Boss. Cultural differences can come in all shapes and sizes, but have you wondered what it would be like to be an American porn star in Japan? In our quest for hard-hitting journalism, we sat down with June Lovejoy, who is one of the most recognized American porn stars in Japan, and got her to spill the beans about the infamous Japanese AV industry. Here is her story. Welcome to our channel, June. It's so lovely to have you. <laughs> I've loved your channel for a long time. Oh, really? Yeah, I watch it a lot. What's your favorite episode? My favorite? Can I say the most recent? <laughs> yeah. It's the one with like the Korean body scrubbing guy. I thought the job was so cool. Yeah. Yeah, so today we're going to hear about your oh, job. Me? Oh, me? <laughs> okay, I'm not a body scrubber. I <laughs> well, um, so we know that you are one of the you know most famous American porn stars in Japan, and a lot of people are very curious about the industry and what you do and of course we're interested about the cultural differences okay. um, regarding the industry um, well I guess just to get started how do you usually introduce yourself oh I rarely do it in English that's for sure but <laughs> I usually say like hi my name is June Lovejoy um, I've been in Japan for about five years now and I've lived all over the United States but I typically say I'm from California and I work in the JV industry nice to meet you yeah. Is that good? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. So, um, is it proper if I say you're quite famous in the industry? Would you that makes me that? happy, but I don't know if it's true. <laughs> do you get recognized, you know, on the streets in public at all? I do. And that, um, actually, when I first joined the industry um, on my debut shoot, I asked the makeup artist, what happens if a fan comes up to me and says, are you doing Lovejoy? And they said, do not say yes, because they could follow you home, or you don't know if they're a weird fan or a good fan. But every time someone says, are you doing Lovejoy to me, I can't help. I'm like super happy that they recognize me. I'm like, oh, yes. I'm like, can I please take a photo with you? And can I get your signature? They're really nice. I've only had maybe one creepy or scary encounter, but they didn't actually come up to me. They just like followed me from the station the entire time. So it was terrifying. Yeah. So it's still nice. So usually you would still react more positively. I can't help when it. People, yeah. It's like, oh, my my fan and yeah, like, yes. me yes. really um, <laughs> have you had like someone who was like a very mm, unforgettable fan someone who really liked your work and you know was nice not <laughs> creepy <laughs> nice. there's only one creepy one but um the best experience i had was actually when we were filming outside for um a, a film and two fan or two, one fan comes up and he's with his friend and his friend is just like really awkward and like what what is going on but his friend is like this uh, 40 year old guy and he's like june i'm your biggest fan like please I, like you're filming right now right i'm so sorry can you please just like sign something and he's like he doesn't have anything on him because he obviously he didn't think he's gonna meet a porn star today and he just whips out like his business card and he's like please sign this like i love you so much and it made me so happy and i was filming a film already so i was just like Lots of serotonin that day. Oh, yeah, that's, nice, that's yeah. nice. So just going back to the very <laughs> beginning, mm -hmm. where are you from and when did you come to Japan? What brought you to Japan? Okay, great. So this is like an oddly hot topic. Uh, I answer truthfully, but people on the internet won't believe me. So I'm American. I've never like been to Europe, but people say I'm European for some reason. Um, I was born in Florida and moved every single year, sometimes twice in one year, and I've lived all over the States. Um, my dad's German and my mom is German-American, but I can't speak German. I've never been to Germany. <laughs> and um, what brought me to Japan? Uh, five years ago, so I came with the intention of being a translator or an interpreter. I graduated college and then came here to study Japanese Sign Language, Chinese and Japanese. And uh, I left that, I guess I left the school with only Japanese knowledge, so I missed out on two. But maybe one day I can catch up, play catch up. So you came mm -hmm. with the intention of becoming maybe a translator right. or interpreter. Um, but now you're in the AV industry, right. what, what happened there? <laughs> uh, I actually landed my dream company and I was so excited, like I can't say the name because I signed a contract, but uh, ever since I was little I wanted to work at this company. Right? Very big, very professional, but when I finally got in there, uh, I worked there for two and a half years and it was a nightmare. And a lot of times when bad things would happen, I just thought like, oh, maybe my Japanese isn't good enough or maybe I don't understand the culture enough yet. But after two and a half years, I was like, no, everyone here is just really bad, like objectively. So, 
that's what made me and it was such a bad experience that I wanted to do something that I actually enjoy I think what really hurt the most is I would do training um, for new hires and there was and there was this one other guy and he, he and I would both do training together and we would get new hires maybe four times a year and every time new hires would come they would pull me over to the side and like Jin, Jin Senpai like that guy is always harassing me and always asking me out and like touching me and it's just like really creeping me out what should I do and I was like oh it's fine um I'll report it and I'll make sure that that never happens again and for two and a half years I reported it over eight times and nothing ever happened and that gets to you because the girls would just quit like they're like oh no one's protecting me and this guy's gonna keep being a sleazebag so I know it's weird like as a porn actor saying this but like I'm not for sexual harassment, like if two consenting adults are like, hey, let's have fun, that's cool, but in a work setting, without any consent, no, that's gross, and I don't tolerate it, even a little bit, but my bosses would be like, oh, yeah, we get a lot of those reports, we'll do something, and then nothing at all, or um, I would experience like a different uh, kind of like bad things and then I would say hey I want to quit and they would kind of gaslight me they'd say like oh if June quits no one can like everyone will suffer and no one none of the work will get done do you really want to let everyone down and I tried to quit four times and they kept saying that and it made it really hard to quit but I was like this is a bad place of course there's a standard like overtime con like every single day overtime I get paid for it which is like, you know better than most jobs but I didn't want to do it but if you didn't do it you wouldn't be able to move up and even though I did do it uh, people who the upper management liked would move up higher even if they weren't necessarily working and it just was really dehumanizing for me and it's, which is funny because people say porn is dehumanizing but I feel like in my current industry I'm more respected than I ever was in the previous one especially because when I would talk to my friends about the bad work experiences that I had, they would say, oh, Jun, all Japanese companies are corrupt, like tongue-in-cheek, but they were being serious, which is why when I was deciding to quit and I would look on like Indeed or something for a new job, in the back of my mind, I was like, if they're all bad, why am I like working so, like, why am I even trying at this point? Like, if it's just going to be another like uh, bad experience, which, and some people may not understand the logic behind this but which is why I was like well maybe I should do something fun for once which to me equals um, you know uh, getting it on <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get your channel deep no it's fine. it's fine it's fine <laughs> um, so you mentioned that the the things that happened to your colleagues or okay. people who you were working right. with, right? Did anything specifically happen to you personally um, at your previous workplace? It, it felt like even though I was working harder than everyone else, and objectively, I can say I'm not bragging, like I would stay after I would come in an hour early, I would do so much for that company, I would never get the chance to like get like rise up in the ranks, so to speak. And I know it's not directly like, you know, someone sexually harassing me, but after two and a half years and I'm still the same position, like there's something there and, and, and I'm putting in an effort. And every time I get like, uh, what is it, those yearly reviews where you talk with your boss and they say like, oh, you're doing great. And like, how do I, how do I get, you know, uh, up? Where's my promotion? Yeah, where's my promotion? And then like, like I mentioned earlier, these newbies, I'm not being jealous. It, there's something weird and I think a little bit vile there where these newbies would come in, they would not do any work at all, and they would get chummy with the boss and move up very quickly. And I don't know if it was, and I, I do know, I do think it's because I was a foreigner and they weren't sure because I was the only foreigner in the company. And I think they were kind of hesitant, like, can June actually do it? Like, they're putting in the effort, but I mean, a foreigner? Like, I don't, like, I don't know if I can say this here, but in my previous industry, I felt like being a foreigner was like a bad thing, but in my current industry, the fact that I'm a foreigner actually separates me and makes it, you know, and, and there's positives to that. And I used to be really embarrassed, like I didn't, when I would do like phone calls and they'd be like, is this a foreigner? And I'm like, oh, I want to hang up now. But here in like, you know, in my current industry, it's like, wow, you're a foreigner, like what you, what's America like? Like it's exciting and they want to know more. But in my previous industry, it was like a, like a disability they would feel. Oh. So. 
That's interesting, yeah, because now your identity actually gives you an edge. Yeah, which is something that I never felt for those two and a half years. I was like, oh god, I wish that I was like Japanese, or I wish that my、uh, accent wouldn't like、uh, put me out or something, or out me, sorry. That is, yeah, yeah. I, I think that's, that's quite surprising for me to hear because、mm-hmm. I would imagine, like, let's say the AV industry,、right. maybe people would prefer, you know,、um, the actresses to be all Japanese.、Mm-hmm. Um, and then you're saying that basically now you, it sounded like you have your own identity even clearer and you enjoy who you are、right. even more. I do feel that strongly.、Um, there are Japanese people and they'll post mean comments on my, my films, like reviews. Like,、uh, not everyone can enjoy a chubby white person in JAV, but it's not supposed to be for everyone. Like, you can't enjoy, not everyone can find. Me attractive, just like not everyone can find a certain person attractive, that's impossible, and it's not my goal. But there are people who are just like, Wow, I've never seen like an,、um, like a white girl like speaking fluent, like dirty Japanese, sorry,、uh, that's like something I'm really good at, and doing all these things. Like, typically, it's、uh, people coming from other countries and they don't speak any Japanese, and it's just they're white, and that's the catch. but White and or foreign and speaking Japanese is something that's kind of rare in the industry,、mm-hmm. at least right now. So, so you've, you've found your niche. Yeah, I like, <laughs> I like doing it. It's fun.、Mm-hmm. Most people in the industry and even fans are like, I've never even spoken to a foreigner, but they're not like, ew, gross foreigner. Like, they're excited they're, because that's new things that we can make.、Mm-hmm. Up until now, I know this doesn't have to do with your current question, but like, say for example, an English teacher role. Um, they'd have to get like a Japanese person to wear a blonde wig and then speak like stereotypical bad Japanese, like katakoto or something. But now they have me to play the roles, and it just makes the films more fun, at least producers say. They're like, no one else can do this role besides you. And that feels really good. Because before it was like, if you leave this company, everyone will suffer, but it was like a bad thing. Yeah, it's a guilt trip. Right. But now it's like, because you're here, we can do these. Films and it makes you feel like wanted. So, you mentioned 2.5 years、right. at your previous work. Right. And then, okay, I, I understand that you're interested in you know, the AV industry、right. um, and porn, but then how did that happen? You, did you just find an agency on your own or what let you do?、Uh, I Googled agencies and the top three that came up, because I was just doing kind of like half as a lark. Like, I didn't really. Know like if I was gonna do it or not. I wasn't nervous at the fact of getting naked and doing these acts. I was just like, I thought, oh, if this one's corrupt, like, this, like if they're all corrupt, this is gonna be a doozy. Like, so I contacted the top three. Two of them were kind of, again, weird, like the foreigner thing. That, like, even though I sent perfect Japanese and spoke perfect Japanese on the phone, they're like, Nihongo d a i j i b u k a i Like, it just, like, you don't have to stop at the foreigner part. Like, it's, it's annoying at that point. And then my current agency was just super professional, as if that, like, they would treat anybody. And I liked the way they treated me, and I went in and did the interview.、Um, they're really upfront. They say, like, you have to work really hard, like,、um, you know, work isn't guaranteed, and these are the risks. And they, they go through a bunch of contracts with you. It's not like some sleazy guy, like, smoking, he's like, You want to get naked? Like, no. <laughs> that looks like something that's going to come out of like, some <laughs> movies or something. <laughs> so it's actually not that type that people would imagine what an agency is. It's actually really professional. I think you have to be, because、mm-hmm. most people,、uh, I, excluding me, like, most people I don't think would want to do this kind of work. And once you go in, you kind of lose any other career chances at that point, which is a harsh reality, but I, I, I think it's true. Um, so, they, I think the agencies and the studios themselves have to be really professional and upfront.、Um, especially now in the climate, like, there's a lot of agencies that protect the actresses, and if they aren't upfront about it, they can get sued. So, it's to,、uh, agencies are definitely protecting themselves as well. Was the ad- audition、mm-hmm. quite difficult, or you know, were you worried if you're going to get the, this、um, contract or not? There's not really an audition. I don't know. It could, there could be auditions for other people, but there was no audition. Ra- there was more like, where do you see yourself going? Like,、uh, why do you want? They kind of ask you, like, why do you want to do this job? To make sure what did your you reasons. Say? What did I say? I, I mentioned the bad company and how I kind of wanted to, like,、um, you know,、uh, get it on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm really open sexually. I, I like human sexuality a lot.、Um, they, they asked me,、um, why do I want to do it?、Uh, what Uh, let's see, 
but more so asking about me they just really explained like the work and what is required to make it in the industry and then also all the legal stuff like um pay how do you get paid and stuff uh, there was no audition it was pretty much let's go to ah oh, there's nothing to worry uh there's not an audition for this agency like i was already in but you go to individual studios and appeal yourself and if the studio wants to take you so there are auditions but not with the agency so there's mm -hmm. that's something maybe not a lot of people know yeah so do you, do you have to like practice and then go to the audition or i don't no, i don't I know how it works it's a good question <laughs> there's no audition okay that's a really good, I've never been asked that. I don't think I've ever said that in English. Because I don't know how it That's works. good. Um, there's no audition where like I have to do any acts like that. Um, we get a paper and it says, what will you do, what won't you do? And you're allowed to pick. Like no one is like, you better select all of them. Because you can't make a good film if you're like being forced to do something. So you just select, yes, I'll do this. No, I won't do this. And then your manager leaves the room and they take a... Uh, naked photos of you just just to like show other producers so they know what you know what you look like right what you look like without your clothes on and that's it and if they like you they, they ask you like questions like oh what what do you like like sexually and uh, how many partners have you had or what don't you like they do ask what don't you like because they don't want to like be on set and then you say no I'm not doing that and then everything just falls apart so that, there are auditions, but just not with the agency. I was 23 when I got in, and then 25 now. So I debuted last year mm -hmm. in January, and before my debut, we filmed three months in advance. Or no, we filmed a little bit more than that, but typically, before a film is released, it's three months to four. Uh, so I haven't been in the industry that long, and I kind of debuted during a tough time for everyone. Um, so not the best timing, but I'm doing my best. It's Is it not the best timing? Sorry, I have mm -hmm. no idea. I'm just it's imagining, not. because like, you know, COVID, everybody stays mm -hmm. at home, mm -hmm. then people have more time to watch? No? That's a very good question. So, uh, with our industry, most people pirate, so if they can watch at home, they're probably not purchasing it. I mean, some people do, and uh, piracy really does kill our industry, um, because we don't make a lot of money as it is, and what we make the most money off are physical sales, and people will buy physical copies if they can meet the actors, so like, meet and greets, or like fan appreciation events, uh, and since we can't do those due to the uh, coronavirus, it makes it really hard for everyone involved, producers, uh, directors, actresses, so. I see, uh, so I, I thought it would right. actually be a growing industry right. during the, okay. There was an increase mm. in sales, but uh, like uh, as more people have trouble finding work outside of the industry, uh, money gets tighter, and if they do want to watch those kind of films, they're probably just pirating it, but mm, please don't pirate. <laughs> Please don't pirate. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it. You don't have to watch mm -hmm. it. Like I, do, I don't un understand why people just pirate anything. Um, so you started at twenty three. Is that mm -hmm. a normal age to to start the in, in oh. the industry, or would you be considered the older or the younger? That's a really good question. Um, it's kind of late. Most people join when they're eighteen or twenty. Um, I'm. I'm li actually just 25, and I know people on the internet are like, I'm 30, 40, whatever, it's fine. But uh, I'm 25 and I play like mom roles or like older women roles because that's the way it is in the industry. Like if you're over maybe 22, you're already playing like mommy at that point. Uh, you're not really getting the younger roles. Is there an age when people usually graduate from the industry or mm -hmm. not really? I think that's actually a good thing about the industry is that there really isn't. Like uh, there's that there's an actual genre like jukujo like for 40 like milfs i guess right and even gilfs are uh, like <laughs> uh like older granny types are also they, there's a place for them which in contrast like idols or something there's not really a place for them there but i have friends who are in their like 40s and still going at it like they've been in since they were like 18 or something yeah you know, like if you have fans who purchase keyword purchase not pirate your work you'll, you'll continue getting offers from studios so it really doesn't depend on your age and right now with like the wonders of technology even as you age you can get like different things done which a lot of actresses do uh, yeah. okay yeah so basically we're saying that as you age you can basically take on different roles and mm -hmm. do different topics yeah th exactly mm -hmm. there's uh, as you age that you get more roles that you couldn't get in your younger like uh, an 18 year old can't really play like a mommy figure for the audience who are not as familiar right. with the industry, can you just give them like a one-on-one on, -one on what <laughs> is, you know, AV industry, what does it stand for? <laughs> so it doesn't stand for like audiovisual or it does, but anyways, AV stands for um, adult video and 
and most people to differentiate they say like JAV which is Japanese adult video and a lot of people online they'll say like oh well, isn't it just porn and I think there's a difference it is porn but there's a difference between Western and JAV like com like a very obvious or very stark differences so the way they um, shoot the style the lighting the plots and also the fact the biggest thing there's censorship um, we're not allowed to show down here um, our genitals <laughs> so that makes it to where we have to f make other things erotic so that's why there's a lot of things that maybe western audiences don't get where it's like armpits are erotic um, the collarbone uh, what is it like cosplay other things are the erotic part because we can't show those parts down there that western porn can so in in short JV is just Japanese porn so you think there is more story? Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah, oh. I love it. That's why when people say like, "Do you want to go into Western porn?" and I'm not interested in it at all. Like, I I want I like the story aspect. I like the atmosphere on the sets, and it's just more fun to me. Like, it's it's not like a death match like I see in Western porn where it's like we have to be as over the top and as many fluids everywhere as possible and just the grunting it's not for me so why do you think it's the difference do you think mm -hmm. is because you know for JV then mm -hmm. people can't resonate more because mm -hmm. it's more like more imaginable or I don't know I think be again with the censorship it's made it to where Japanese uh, porn producers and directors have to be more creative than Western counterpoints, and I'm not, if you like Western porn, no big deal, it's just, I don't like it, because I like the story, there's like, no, <laughs> I feel like I'm talking to like an angel, and I'm like the most like, <laughs> corrupt person, <laughs> it's like, netorare, like, where the wife gets stolen away from, like, by the boss, from her husband, and there's just all this drama, plus sex, it's like watching a lifetime drama, and you're like, oh no, oh, Michiko, what is she gonna do, <laughs> like, it's fun, um, and I think, I do, I did ask uh, a lot of my fans, uh, why do you even like JV if you don't speak Japanese? Like, what's the appeal? And they, they mentioned the lighting, the stories, even if they don't understand, like, the words, they can still follow the story somewhat, like, oh, this wife is cheating and she doesn't want to, oh no, like, all this passion, and yeah, they like the, the story, I think the story points are the biggest parts, and uh, the, the way that it's shot. Yeah, that's true, because some of the stories, mm -hmm. we don't really see in the regular dramas oh, yeah. out yeah they're pretty out there there was one where I was like doing a ghost like <laughs> yeah so you mentioned that you weren't interested in the porn industry from the beginning right. right what was your perception by then and has it changed how has it changed oh gosh um probably like a lot of viewers I thought that it was like all yakuza and like a CD and if I wasn't careful, I was going to get hurt kind of thing. <laughs> um, so I went into the first, uh, when I went into my agency for the first meeting, I went in thinking like, oh, this guy's probably got a crap ton of tattoos. Like, he's probably super scary. But it was just this regular, like, salaryman, like, oh, nice to meet you. Like, please take a seat. And just super professional. And I did ask, just, it's kind of a funny story, but I did ask, um, are there Yakuza ties in the industry? And they said... We don't make enough money for them to hang out. <laughs> There's not any money in the industry, so they're like in other entertainment um, industries apparently. But they, they don't hang out us. with us. <laughs> they don't hang out with us. They don't hang out with us. What about your impression towards the mm -hmm. profession itself? So not mm -hmm. in terms of the industry, mm -hmm. but an AV actress. Right. What do you think about them before you mm -hmm. were one, and has it changed? Oh, uh, I've never really had like a negative as like a negative opinion towards sex workers or any like only fans is really big right now i don't have an only fans but i i think it's kind of liberating and i think it's cool that they do those kind of jobs i don't think of them as like dirty i wish it was more regulated for sex work as a whole but when if i saw like an av actress i would think oh she's really pretty and it's cool that she's doing that job but i don't know if i could ever do it that would probably be my opinion before entering the industry so you felt like when you mention that you don't mm -hmm. think that you, you could do it, are you talking about like technically you couldn't mm -hmm. do it or like you were, you know, you didn't want to be on camera right. or why, why did you think that it's not something mm -hmm. that you want to do? For me, it's, it was never like getting naked on camera and doing those acts. That was the hard part. It's the part where you kind of throw away any other career option and I wasn't really ready to make that leap. Like if it didn't, if it didn't work out and I wasn't with you here right now, like a year ago when I debuted, if no one bought my film, I would still have gone into porn and I couldn't have returned to an interpreting job 
I mean, I could, maybe I could do it for like three months, but eventually I would be outed. Like, hey, didn't you do this? And I'd get fired. So that's, that's why I wasn't really sure if I could actually go into it. And I think it, it does... A lot of people do say like, oh, porn is super easy. All you have to do is like lay on your back and like, you know, do these sexual acts and get money. But there's like real risk that you have to take and um, and acknowledge when you're going into the industry. And I think that's kind of, um, I don't want to say noble, but I can't really think of, I think it's kind of um, just... You need a lot of determination. Confident, yeah, um, in yourself. Like, I don't think it's noble, but I can't think of a good word. I just think admirable. Admirable, the, the confidence that they have um, and recognizing those risks that you're not going to be able to do really much of anything unless you make an effort while, during your time in the industry. So it sounded like a point of no return it, yeah, at that point. I guess so. so you're saying that you were able to make that decision because mm. the previous company was bad enough or because right. somewhat you were you reach that interest level to oh. get yourself into the, the, the AV industry? I, I think the previous company was so bad that I was just like, I want to do something fun. I was just really stressed. Um, I wasn't really, I did think like, oh, if this doesn't work out, I am not really going to be able to work in a company where I have to show my face. But I mean, I've made like, I've come this far by myself and I feel, I felt confident that I could make it work. And you did make it work. Yeah, so. I mean, hopefully. I'm only on, I'm on year one and a half right now, so here's hoping. So. <laughs> so I guess speaking of the Japanese AV industries, is, you know, someone like yourself a foreign mm-hmm. um, AV actress quite rare? Do you know how many of those are? Um, I think there's one other foreign actress, but I don't know if they're still in the industry. Um most of the time we have people who are mixed, like a quarter Japanese or half Japanese and half Puerto Rican or half uh, Malay- Malaysian or something, or half Russian. But non of non-Japanese descent, I think there's only two. Um, it's, it's hard to get work and you, let's see, there's the language aspect of it. Like if you don't speak Japanese, you're pretty much only there because of your skin color and it's not that rare, so. You know, it's weird to say rare as your skin color. It's kind of gross, but yeah. So do you s- do you think it's mostly the language aspect? I think that's so, yeah. why. That, is that why there's so few foreign um, actresses in the industry? I think less so of uh, people just not like being attracted to foreigners. Um, it's the language aspect. Like they don't want to hear English when they're trying to have their relaxing personal time. It you know they're studying English at school. Why do they want to hear it during their private time? So, and a lot of Japanese people do have like stress in regards to English or uh, language, like non-Japanese in general. So yeah, I, I see, I can understand why they don't want to hear English in their own uh, like foreign. Mm, yeah. So you're saying that if we're thinking from the demand and um, supply perspective, mm-hmm. it's not that the foreign foreigners don't want to go into the industry, it's more like the industry requires foreigners to have very high language capabilities. I think so, because we have to interact with our fans, um, more so than like the stuff we do on camera, it's the stuff that we do off camera with our fans that makes the biggest impact. So um, if you can't interact with your Japanese fans, they're not going to interact with you, and ergo they're not going to buy your films, which means you don't get work. So, um, yeah, like I said, like people come from abroad, like America, and they come to film a couple films. But even if a lot of Japanese watch that and they're like, oh, that was so much, that was so good, even if they are okay with the English part, they can't really interact with their favorite actress, and so they can't make like any sort of connection. Mm-hmm. And at that point, uh, it's just, you know, uh, I think the connection is more important than people realize. Yeah, interesting, because from what we've heard, I mean, the discussion with you, I feel like connection really is big, whether it's mm-hmm. the type, the differences between the foreign, the Western porns mm-hmm. and the Japanese porns, or um, oh, the type true. of people who are, yeah, so that they can actually feel a connection with the person who is I don't doing. think they have fan events in, mm-hmm. in the Western stuff. They have a huge event called AVN in Las mm-hmm. Vegas, like once a year. But in Japan, like people will have them maybe once a week where you can meet your favorite actress and get a signature, take pictures with her. And even now, because of the pandemic, uh, a lot of people are live streaming and you know hanging out with their fans online. And I think it's more important that people realize a lot of new actresses will join the industry and they're like, oh, I just thought I was supposed to get naked on camera. And like, no, it's a 24, like 24-7 thing now. You're going to have to interact with your fans. 
because if you don't take care of them, they're just going to go on to an, the next person. You have to have something different that differentiates you from someone else, and also you have to be very respectful and loving towards your fans. You don't have to date them, but you have to, you know, thanks for buying my films, how did you like it? Like, oh, wow, thank you. Like, It does sound a little bit like the idol industry, would you yeah. say? Yeah, I think so. I think that's a very uh, ac like a accurate statement. Just to be clear, you weren't really forced into the industry, right? It sounded <laughs> like you were interested in the industry oh. and you went in. That's a, yeah, but most people, I think that's a really good question. I'm, I appreciate you asking uh, up front. No, I wasn't forced into the industry. Um, I think it's kind of hard to be forced into the industry in Japan at this current time because of all of the kind of like um, safety nets that are put in place by agencies that aren't, that are there to protect actresses themselves. So I wasn't forced. I mean, I'm, I'm super pervert and I wanted to do this show and I'm glad that I get to do it. Um, there are people who are just in the, in the industry for the money and they might not like the job that they're doing. But they're not being forced. I mean, other than th by themselves. Mm, yeah, because I do recognize that there are a few different genres, and mm -hmm. some look like right. they are forced. Yeah. In a way, I guess right. that's that's the plot or something. But yeah. you're saying that it's actually just acting, and they're not really forced. It's acting. Yeah. Um, they have to get a what is it? An okay by certain companies to even sell it. So they have to get consent forms from the actress before and after that she agrees to this and then they send the script as well and they're like it's all scripted none of this was real this is the actress this is her agency uh, this is her consenting on camera uh, before every film my my man manager isn't there it's just me and the producer and i have to read in front of the camera this like three page uh contract in like super super legal japanese like legal jargon and it just says like I understand what I'll be doing. This is the acts that I'll be doing today. I consent to these. I am of age. I'm not pregnant. Like all of these things, you know. Uh, I have my STD check, and you submit that as well. So those those films where they look like they're being forced, which is really good acting. So I see. Yeah. So so that that's more of the skills. Because sometimes it's skill set. Like, oh, what a are, lovely are skill set. Okay, like yeah. lo they look like they're you know forced yeah. or I appreciate know. like people mm -hmm. worrying about it because sex trafficking is a big deal. But um, like hyper focusing on JAV, I can tell you with strong confidence that there's not sex trafficking in my industry. But yes, we should protect other people like in Korea or America, like where they are being trafficked. But the, the closest thing I'd say we have to trafficking is like scouts, where they'll say like, hey, do you want to join AV? But the girl can say no, like no one's like holding anything to them. And they're told the risks and there's lots of like legal paperwork that we have to sign in the beginning. So. Mm -hmm no trafficking is and if there was i would tell everyone i would be very loud about it mm, that's good to know though yeah. um where do your parents know do your family no, yeah oh uh, i told everyone um uh, all of my friends all of my family before i was going in because there's weirdos on the internet that will like train out you and i was like no we're doing this by my rules i'm telling everyone so my mom knows uh my dad we're not close so he probably doesn't know but my dad's like super racist so he'd probably be mad at the fact that like I'm even kissing Japanese guys so that's a totally different can of worms my mom just said be careful but we're not close anyway so um, she, you know she can't really say don't do it she's but were you worried or were you hesitant mm -hmm. telling your parents mm -hmm. or telling your friends at the beginning no because I ran away from a young age and I've been on my own like the entire time, so no one's opinion really uh, affects me. And, like no one's going to pay my rent, no one's going to take care of me. It's all me. So if I've already made the decision that I want to do it, and I'm, I understand the risks, and I still want to do it, then at this point I'm just saying, hey, uh, I'm just doing them a courtesy by letting them know, like this is what I'll be doing now. And my mom and also all of my friends, they knew how bad the previous company was. So actually the reaction was. Oh, you finally quit! Like that was the, the happiest part. And I still have friends from college or like exes who follow me on my June Love Joy accounts, and they say, "Oh, you look great today." And it, it always like makes me feel kind of like embarrassed. <laughs> Not that I'm like embarrassed of my job, but just that they're rooting me on, and they knew me when I was like this. I'm still a dorky person, but like a dorky person in uh, high school or college. So, were they surprised that you got into the industry, or were they just like, "Oh, yeah, I guess, I guess that's what you wanted to do." Oh, that's a good question. No, I'm pretty sure everyone was surprised. They're like, wait, you, you were actually like that? Like, you, you like that kind of stuff? And I was like, yeah, of course. But, I mean, everyone's like, oh, you look really good. Like, I, I watch your films. Like, you're doing great. I'm going to cheer you on. 
Um, I mean, obviously, people who didn't like it probably we didn't say anything, but it doesn't really. Even if they were like, "June, I'm really," if they were sincere, like, "I'm really worried about you. Like, you shouldn't do this." They don't understand the risk like I do. Like, they're looking from the outside, so either they listen to me, like uh, I've understood the risk, I want to do this, or they don't, and it doesn't really matter to me. So, as as cruel as that sounds. Yeah, but it's nice that you you still receive you know messages from your friends who oh, yeah. support you for whatever you want to do, right? Yeah, that does. Yeah, did I have any? I didn't have any negative comments. My mom just said be careful, and then <laughs> my ex girlfriend like messages me on the account all the time. She's like, "What are you doing?" Like, <laughs> do you still remember what your first shoot was like? Yes, my first film was actually not my debut film, which is more common than uh, you would think, and. I came on set, and the most memorable thing is that the makeup artist was like super obsessed with Taylor Swift, and she was just like, "Oh my God, you look like Taylor Swift! Like you are so cute!" And that's, she just talked to me about Taylor Swift, and I was like, "I'm on a porn set, and this Japanese like lady is just talking to me about Taylor Swift the entire time." So I was not expecting that. Um, there was a really beautiful like. Oh, I was surprised about how many females were on set. So makeup artists, I guess, like I could see them being like more female, a more female oriented career. There's a lot of male makeup artists as well, but the the camera, the theater, the one who's taking pictures, not filming, uh, was this really nice like beautiful short haired woman, and she was just like, oh, Jim, you're so cute. Okay, like smile. Okay, beautiful. And just it was really fun. And everyone was just goofy, like laughing on set, like, "Oh, Jin, that's great!" Like, "Oh, yeah, yeah, this." And like, "Do you need a do you need water? What can we get you to eat?" Um, I didn't think it was gonna be a bad experience, but I did imagine like people like smoking, and it's like <laughs> dark and gloomy. And it's like, "All right, get naked." Like, why are you old? I don't know. Yakuza, like, <laughs> <laughs> impression. <laughs> because I, I mean, I didn't know. I mean, that's why mm. I, I imagined like just a dark room and just like, "All right, get naked." Like, here we go. But it was really fun. Like we're eating our like lunch pintos together and just like joking around. I, it was really really fun. And you think they're pretty respectful? Yes, so. I think you have to be, or people uh, will leave the industry immediately. Mm -hmm. You have to be nice to each other, even not just to the actresses, but to each other, like directors to the staff. They can't treat them like garbage, or they're just gonna leave because the industry already has a bad image as it is. Mm -hmm. And once you enter the industry, even as like a staff member, you can't say, "Hey, what have you been doing for the last three years?" Oh, I've been a staff member on a porn set. Like. It kind of hurts your job chances. So is there something that you were quite surprised about the industry or about the actress mm -hmm. actors that you know you had a different impression about? Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised. Not kind of. I was very surprised at how many people, actresses, actors, staff, directors, makeup artists, like how many people were married, and not just married, but married with kids. And really? Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna name any names, but I would say most. Actresses or actors are married. I'm not married, but you know, or they have kids. So, wow. Because I would, I, I'm sorry. I don't want to be stereotypic, but yeah. like I would imagine there would be some difficulty, right. um, you know, when when they're trying to look for a partner and trying to explain what they do, um, but it's not actually the case. You're saying. I think it's harder for actors. I I do hear from actors sometimes where they're using like dating apps and they once they reveal their job. They get blocked like immediately, but for actresses, yeah, there is a hurdle that we have to overcome. But for the most part, they just marry within the industry. So people who already understand that it's just work and we're not, you know, cheating on our partners or anything. And I, I sometimes have like uh, an actor on set, and the the shoot is going a little bit longer than we imagined. And then the wife will call like, "What are you doing? Are you cheating on me?" And he's like, "No, I'm at work, but work is this." And so it's not cheating, but if he went out offset, mm -hmm. something that wasn't scripted. Then that would be cheating. So I, I think it's kind of funny what we think in the industry equates to cheating and what is work, which is why I do think they uh, marry within the industry often. Question. Yes. So do they get married within the industry because it's hard to have someone to understand their job outside of the industry, or is it because they have like sexual activity and oh, that spikes the relationship and the the feelings between each other? Can't speak for all actresses, but I've never been attracted to an actor like like that romantically because I I do see them like almost like a brother. It's kind of gross, like or like a part like a business partner or a coworker. So 
for me, I've never been like, oh, I want to date this person. But I could see other actresses who are like, oh, I really connected to this person. I want to get to know them more. But um, actors are really professional and they're worried about like overstepping their boundaries. So they're actually kind of, not in a bad way, but like cold on set. Like once the scene is over, I'll like chat with staff and like directors and, and have fun. But the, the actor will kind of go to a different room because he doesn't want to be disrespectful to the actress and then m maybe risk losing work in the, in, uh, in the future. That's interesting. Yeah. Like, I, I think if, if, if this industry is going to be something somewhere difficult for me to, to go in, that would mm -hmm. be like, it's so hard to separate work from private. Right. I don't know if it's a biological mm -hmm. thing or maybe just my thing. Yeah, <laughs> but well, yeah. I think it's, I don't know, maybe for, for females, right. I do feel like, you know, having that sexual connection right. is actually links to the, the feelings. Right. Even sometimes if that comes first, the feelings would actually right. kind of, you know, come along because of right. some hormone like changes, etc. Right. But you were able to kind of separate that naturally or do you have mm -hmm. to work on kind of making sure that you have to switch on and off, etc. So that's a really good question as well. So for jokingly, I can say private sex and sex on camera are totally different. Like you're going to have like three different people filming you from different angles and say, oh, wait, cut. <laughs> like, um, they're gonna say like maybe maybe uh, can you put can you face your face this way so I can catch more of your eyes that's not in private sex no one is ever going to say that to you so yes uh, in in good private sex yeah I'll have the same reactions you do but for me like or for us we're making a film like it's it's uh it's sometimes like it's really fun sex and it feels good but I don't get that emotional connection because again there's like three guys like or, or women sometimes directors like filming me from different angles stopping or like if they want me to like come even if it's like faking like they want you to come at this moment because it, it's good for the film they'll do like off camera like like all right June now and I'm like oh like oh I came like <laughs> sorry dirty but yeah it's it's not real so oh interesting yeah. Yeah. because I guess from the audience perspective right. they only see what is there, what yeah, is true. already right. as a production yeah. out there, but then we kind of sometimes forgot about how it's actually. Right. There's you know. bloopers, just like we had bloopers on, on today. Yeah, this, this, and uh, one one studio, Celebrino Tomo, they actually released their bloopers and behind the scene footage, so that's fun. So they're very open, like it's all fake. But I, I don't know why people get like so worked up about like, oh my god, is this real? Like, are they actually putting it in? Sometimes we do things like Gigi, like where they're not actually putting it in, and people are like, oh my god, is it actually in there? Like, oh, is that real? Is that real <laughs> semen? Like, why does it matter? It's just a film at that point. Like, if you want real stuff, have real sex. Like, maybe people were just too involved <laughs> in the scenario. You're getting worked up over the wrong things, buddy. What's your, I guess, what are the genres that you usually, you mm -hmm. know, act for? Or do you have a favorite one? Mm -hmm. um, I like, I get so excited when I get anything where it's a lesbian film or I get to be like the more dominant role. Not like whips and chains, but where I get to be on top, um, like with a guy or a girl. And most of the time I get roles where... I'm kind of like this playful, perverted female, like just kind of teasing the guy nicely. Or I get teacher roles, obviously. Or what else? I lately I've just been getting like, there's no role. You're just doing Lovejoy. Like they like the character as as it is, which makes me happy. But before I would do a lot of teacher um, roles. Like it, like are people gonna buy this? Like I've already been in like ten. Like it's the same thing. Do you have to, you know? Do a genre that you don't really like or you can mm -hmm. pretty much pick and work with people who you only want to work with uh you do have every right to say like i will not do this um you can pick who you want to work with but if the producers can afford like say for example this actor is the only one you'll work with um they can't afford his appearance fee you're not really you're not gonna you're gonna lose work if you're too much of a, like kind of spoiled um but i've gotten work um offers like things that I will not, like morally won't do. I know it's weird, but like I am uncomfortable with. And I've said like, no, I won't do it. And my manager got kind of pissy, but the agent or the studio themselves were really nice. I'm uncomfortable with like anything where the male actor, I know he's not underage, but where they play an underage, like a student and I'm the teacher. And 
I said, no, I don't want to do that. And my, my manager, I have like seven managers, but um, wow. one, of my, yeah, one of my managers uh, was like, they're, they're 18 though, like they're not actually underage. And I was like, yeah, but it's gross that I have to pretend they are. And I'm uncomfortable with it, so I can't make a good film. And he kind of laid off, but yeah, I can say no. If there's an actor, uh, we actually, when we fill out those um, interview sheets, at the studios, we say, are there any actors you don't want to work with? And that person's just blacklisted from, from ever working with me. And I, I do, I have blacklisted one person. Why? So, uh, he kept asking me to go on dates, like, after the, he's like, oh, Jim, I connected to you. Like, we're so, <laughs> like I, don't you just feel it? And I'm like, no, no, no. But every time I met him, he was, like, weird like that. He's like, come on, like, swap lines with me. And, like, I'm going to go home and play with my cats. Like, <laughs> I'm not going on a date with you. You mentioned that you have the, the lesbian parts and then you also work yeah. with like guys. So is yeah. that because you're comfortable with different sexes, mm -hmm. even in private life, or if it, or is it because it's just for yeah. acting? Oh, so my first romantic relationship was with a girl when I was younger, like 12. Um, and I like women much more than I like men, definitely. Uh, so when I get lesbian films, I'm really excited because it is harder to meet women in Japan, I feel, like as a foreigner. Um, but sexuality-wise, I just identify as queer, just because it's an umbrella term, and I don't have to explain anything. But if they're like, do you like girls and guys? Then yes. But anything, anything's fine. Not anything. Like, <laughs> if it moves, I'm down. No, but <laughs> I like I like women the most. But men are totally on the table. But that's nice because then you you can you have a lot of options to choose from, basically. Right. Um, but something I don't like in the industry is. There are people who actually like women who do the lesbian films and people who don't, but they're just doing it for the money. And because there's that uh, censorship, they'll say like, oh, don't lick me because that's gross. Like, just lick the end part of my thigh. And I don't think that makes a good film. Like, it's just like too, it looks too fake. I know I said everything's fantasy, but God, like we can't make everything fake. Right? What would you consider the most popular genre in Japan? Oh, okay. So it used, I would have said, um, I would have said like the underage girl things. And when I say underage, I don't mean like little kids. I mean like the high school JK. Like that used to be the most popular, but because of the pandemic, um, it's actually now like the dominant female role. Because the reason, and what this is what we think in the industry, we don't know for sure, but we saw a high spike in those sales, is because um, a lot of guys are at home and just like laying around and not moving around a lot. So maybe they kind of want the women to come to them like and kind of like take care of them sexually rather than them like being the dominating force so it's just kind of fun to see like what gets popular and what goes out I just, uh, before it used to be uh, gyaru style was really really insanely popular I'm glad I joined after that because I can't do gyaru why why was it so popular I don't uh I wasn't in the industry, so I haven't actually asked. I want to ask. I can. They're hot. Like Gyaru looks really cool and really fun. Um, I don't know, like culturally, what at the time would have made that more popular. But I can just say it used to be Gyaru, then it was like JK, and now it's uh, those dominant female ones, and also anal. But I don't know why anal is really popular right now. So for dominant female ones, you're saying that it's more because maybe because. You know, guys are just staying at home, they're right. chilling, they expect people to come. Or do you think it has something to do with the societal change of us actually seeing more dom dominant female oh, that's good. in the society or workplace? Yeah, I think that could... Oh, that's really that's a really good point. I could see that before in the industry when... Um, there's a lot of people now who actually want to go into the industry. And, like Japanese women who are like, I like sex and they're very open about it. And if they're open about it and they le legitimately like sex, then they can make better films, at least in my opinion. So maybe it's become more popular because even though we had those dominant female films in the past, maybe it was a girl who's not so confident and she's just reading a script, but now it's an actual like perverted girl who wants to do these things and is actually being very natural and perverted. So yeah, that could, that's totally, I could see that too. Yeah, maybe in the past those like, you know, being, being, proactive or vocal about right. you know your your sexual interest as a female mm. is not as acceptable in Japan right it's not why, why do you think things have changed I, I don't want to give all the credit to like Western media but I do think that it does have a um, high like, influence on in, on Japanese viewers and maybe seeing like you know those kind of like sexualized music videos or like TV shows or movies they think like oh I want to dress that way too 
and Japan is getting slowly progressive. So when these Japanese women kind of dress in a little bit more provocative way, um, and they can also like work, what is it? They don't have to like get married to survive anymore. They can like live how they want to live and be more open. Um, I think it's easier for them to be more open about it, their sexuality, um, maybe feel like even if they are open about it, it doesn't matter if they can't get married because maybe they don't want to get married. Like, I don't know why everyone's so weird about like everyone get married. Like, why? it's not the end goal for everyone. So it, it's fine if it is for you, but if someone wants to be just open sexually and confident, I think there's no problem with that. And it's like not a very popular opinion, but I don't think everyone has to get married or even has a perfect partner in the first place. Like marriage is kind of a wild thing. You're going, you're like agreeing to be with them forever. And if things don't work out, then you, know, you get divorced. But why do you have to get married like at, at this day and age? And also I like women more and it's not even legal for me to get married <laughs> to a woman anyway. So I don't really focus on marriage Anyways, and I think marriage is kind of like a privilege at that point because two people like I like you I understand you you like me you understand me let's get married that's a big deal and to just rush into it because you feel like pressure from society not a good idea and but in the agent uh, in my industry I, I mentioned before they already understand each other and their work on a very emotional level because like I'm naked on set like at that point I have to be like naked in my heart which sounds cheesy but I really do feel that way um, you have to open up like almost at your soul and you can take with that what you will but when you open up that much I, I think you can find a really good partner but in a regular work setting you have to be very quiet you have to kind of like tone yourself down for other people uh, I don't I don't think it's a very conducive environment for marriage and I know I no one's asking for marriage advice from a foreign actress but that's just how I feel I mean people still ask advice for people who ask from, from me <laughs> I'm not, I'm sorry, don't get married don't yeah. do it. <laughs> A lot of our viewers are very curious about how well porn actresses in Japan are actually paid. Okay. What do you think? I think um, we're not paid enough, uh, but we were pay they were paid really, really well back in the day before all the reform. First of all, all of the agencies take 70%, uh, at least mine. Mine took 70% and now they take 50 because I, I complained. I'm glad. They, they take 70%? Yes. Isn't that bad? That's awful. And you're doing this career and it's like, you can't do it forever, right? And so you, ha you have to save money, at least have like a little egg, like an egg left over. Um, yeah, they took 70%. Now they take 50, thank God. But I, I don't think we make enough. I think the amount that eight, uh, studios give to the actors themselves uh, is fair, but the agency is there. And if we don't have an agency, we can't film. So I think we don't make enough. And just to give like a ballpark estimate, um, let's see, should I do it in USD? I guess? Yeah. Okay. Um, lowest I've ever received, oh, not myself, me, sorry. I'm going to say everyone, okay. <laughs> oh, because there could be even lower. So mm -hmm. this isn't an amount I've received, mm -hmm. but I've heard about it. Um, like $400 for a super simple, maybe like two hour shoot. Um, and that's with the 50 or 70% being taken by the agency and then highest I've ever heard is like 50,000 I'm not sorry 5,000 sorry 5,000 dollars so 400 to 5,000 dollars it just depends on the set uh, the biggest factor is how many times you are actually having sex on camera so if it's like those fake scenes where it says no one's actually putting it in and we're just acting like it's in uh, you're not going to make as much as you would say for example doing it three times like actually putting it in so, oh, so it depends on how like how many actual sexual Right. And uh, lesbian films do make less. Uh, anal, I would say, does kind of go high when you're first starting out. And then, sorry, this is really dirty. And uh, con I think something that would be kind of surprising is that those hardcore BDSM films don't make a lot of money at all because they don't sell as well. They're very mm -hmm. niche, niche film. So. so the more popular is actually still just, just a regular type of story would mm. you say like not the very extreme ones regular like a regular like not normal set yeah. maybe 1000 2000 mm. just like like bare minimum all across the board for everyone so do um i guess um av actresses usually just survive on 
the the shoots that they have, or mm -hmm. do they usually still do a lot of part time jobs to right. try to earn as much money as possible? I kind of they I kind of entered the industry at a bad time, so I can't answer too well. But I can say that my because of the coronavirus, my earnings have been cut to ten percent of what they were before the virus. So I used to film five times a week, and now I film maybe if I'm lucky maybe four times a month and it's not because I'm like not popular anymore it's because like studios will actually say we haven't made any like we can't sell physical copies so we're actually kind of hurting on our side too and um, we can't do fan events anyways and we want to and those are really big and important for the sales anyways but uh, just what actresses do as a whole we'll do interviews like this or appearing on TV shows appearing on variety shows um, appearing in magazines um, I think porn is less, we're porn actresses, like JV actresses, but it's less to do with that because you can't, it's not sustainable, you can't do it forever. Eventually you will run out of ideas or um, there's a finite amount of studios anyways and they're like, oh, if we're going to film you again, what are we going to do this time? Like, Okay, yeah. interesting. So it's, it, it also, they also want to change faces and then yes. have different people. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So debut, um, a lot of people because of the pandemic, a lot of people from maybe the red light district, like Fuzoku, they're joining the industry because they can't get work right now due to like social distancing. They join and they can do one to two films, but after that there's no work and they leave immediately. And it's no fault of them, it's not that they're not popular, it's because there's no way to really um, sell tell yourself, um, mm -hmm. like appeal yourself at those fan events, again the fan interaction is the most important I think, um, so they, they leave after doing one to two films. You can get a debut film quite easily I think, because the new face is kind of exciting, like well what are they going to do next? But I see, so it is a hard time for the industry and for it. yourself as right. well. Right. Mm -hmm. So if it was a regular mm -hmm. work day, okay. what, what is a typical day like? Typically um, we have to go on set maybe 7, 8 a.m., um, take a shower, get makeup done, sign the consent forms, and do like a little meeting about the film, and then start filming. Then a lunch break, and maybe finish around 10, 11 p.m., so from 8 to 10, 11 p.m. It's definitely longer than an, a regular salary uh, man's job, I guess. Yeah, it is pretty long, from 7 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah, and it just feels normal to me. Like, as I said that, I was like, that's really long. But that's, like, well, <laughs> that's really long, but it's normal, I guess, yeah. It, does it get tiring for you, this job? I like, I like moving around, like, being physical, and so it's fun. And also, just the atmosphere on the set is really fun anyway. So even though, like, oh, man, it's already 9 o'clock, I've never thought that. Like, I'm just, like, joking around with the makeup artist or, like, playing on my phone or... There's never really a time, and also, I don't know if this is just me, but I think of my time on set as like a mini interview and another chance to get work, so if I'm like always just on my phone not interacting with anyone or like bitching about the time, the director's going to probably not think too highly of me, so I, I make an effort to interact with the uh, staff on my, on my days and shoots, I guess. So you mentioned that there is, I guess, part of the acting mm -hmm. part but at the same time it is still very physically tiring yes. right yeah. like even for no normal person like oh. <laughs> it was like yeah i i <laughs> like, when i watch so my much film, energy yeah you're right i don't know why for me it's but i do hear from other actresses like i think there's like a switch that we get into and there's like that serotonin and all the endorphins running so it makes it easier for us but say for example you were in the industry for the money and not for the fact that you're like you like sex in general um so i think it could be more difficult for them like they, they're just like oh i want my paycheck i want to go home already but i'm like oh what are, what kind of film are we doing like having a good time mm -hmm. so i don't really think about the time there was one shoot that took 24 hours where i was like Definitely looking at the clock, but I was still with a director that I really liked and everyone was nice on set So I didn't really mind the time too much. I was really tired and like oh are my bags showing yeah. like Can you tell us about your most memorable shoot? Yes. Oh, I feel bad because I this is the one I always end up using but it's just too good not to say So I had a film that was 24 hours long like 6 a.m. to 6 a.m. Uh, 6 a.m. the next day, but it wasn't supposed to be that long it just ended up taking more time than we thought and um, the plot was that I was a foreign exchange student moving to a haunted house and the ghost starts doing things with me and in order like it looked like someone was like groping me um, but we were just using like um, what are those like 
air cans that you spray or like leaf blowers. So we had to take every single shot twice because one is with sound and one is without sound. Um, so it ended up taking 24 hours. It was the most memorable just because of how crazy and fun it was. Like there was a lot of theatrics. Um, we had to make it to where you couldn't see the actor behind me as they were like doing things, uh, do with that, like use your imagination. Um, make it all like pitch black but still like kind of make some creepy purple lighting it was just really beautiful like theatrically and it was all on me whether or not the film was going to be good or not and i like the reviews because they're like they're not even having sex but it's hot like it's just me acting as if i am having sex so and i like the spooky aspect of it sorry that i don't know what my answer is so bad that time <laughs> that, that, that sounds really i mean creative yes. I guess and <laughs> as you mentioned it's something it really relies on depends on your your skills and your acting skills um, so I guess it, in that sense it has to be you yeah. to make that film and they do say that and that makes me feel so happy when the directors say like only June only you could have made this film this good and that feels good because in my previous work I was never told like oh I was told I guess like June, if you're not here, nothing will go well. But it was more like in a, like a creepy, manipulative way, rather than like, wow, you like you made a really good scene. Like, thank you. Like from gratitude, I guess. Um, I don't know if this like is uh, too long, but another memorable film was with a girl who ran away from an abusive home, and she was gay, but she had never kissed anyone or been like hugged any like any sort of romantic or sexual relationship with a guy or girl. And she wanted money to like move uh, to Tokyo away from her abusive father, and so she did one film with me. And I was like, oh, "Are you okay?" I was really uncomfortable. I was like, "Is this okay? Like you're like I'm going to be your first kiss, your first experience." And she's like, "No, like I I want you to be like I've specifically requested you because your experience and you actually you're gentle and all that." And just hearing like all of her personal information and uh, like story just was really touching to me and. Um, you mentioned like do you get emotionally connected like on set I think that was one where I actually did get emotionally connected because to her it wasn't about like debuting like she didn't she only did one film with me and then no more I don't even know where she is if she's happy I hope she is but you know that was her first kiss so that was very stressful I guess we're gonna switch to a quite different topic okay um we wanted to ask you about the STDs do you think mm -hmm. Japanese um, how strict is the Japanese AV industry in mm -hmm. terms of these like protocols sort or of stuff? Mm -hmm. So we have to get tested bare minimum once a month and uh, my agency pays for it which I'm grateful for. Actors, they have to pay out of their own pocket. Um, I mean, we're, they're really strict about it. We get the, there's, um, I don't know how to say it in English, the certain diseases that you get tested for, there's like a basic one, like a regular person who doesn't do porn, maybe they'll get tested for just four, but we have to do nine, which is also an inner test where the doctor like opens you wide and looks in. Um, so we have to do very like invasive almost, uh, just very thorough tests. And you have to bring it to every single shoot. Like when I meet the actor, even if I've met him tons of times, even if I did a shoot with him yesterday, like the day before, I just show him like, nice to meet you you know and um yeah it's just i i feel really protected i wish more people outside of the industry would get tested i think that's it's kind of weird that only we do it like in japanese society a lot of people like oh i don't need it but you, you do you really do please get tested do you think the reason why people are not getting tested is because they think if they just go get tested that means they can they potentially have STDs and that's some bad stereotypes or impression oh uh, I think I, and it's not a very nice opinion but I think the people who don't get STD checks are just selfish like they even if they have a it's not it's probably like a pride thing maybe there is shame with having it but I feel like the people who don't get tested in the first place like even if they had an STD um, they wouldn't really care and maybe not tell their partners but um, yeah, and even in the industry, like say for example, there are some actresses who not only do porn, but maybe do like escorting. One of my friends uh, recently contacted me and they were like, oh my God, like I did this lesbian film and I, and I caught something and that was the only film I did, so I know it was from that person. And uh, they immediately tell everyone that, because they have a track record of who had sex with who, I guess. And it's curable. I mean, the thing that she caught, thankfully it's curable, but 
I think it's good that we have those tests. And even if you don't do porn, you should get tested. I know I said that, but I really want people to get that message. And then if you know that you're safe, at least in as, as far as STDs go, I think you can have a more pleasurable experience. Mm -hmm. And I do, I tell my fans, female and male, I'm like, get tested. Oh, and kind of fun note, we do get um, tested for Corona when we get our STD picks as well. So I know a lot of people send me weird messages or like, you're the reason it's spreading in <laughs> We're tested, like lay off, buddy. So. But is it expensive to get tested? For me, it's $150. Per and month. You do it one, one time, time, right? One yeah. time. And uh, I, I've done it like twice in one month mm -hmm. if I'm like feeling kind of weird or something, but my agency pays for it. No, I could do it every day. I mean, they'd be like, June, slow down there, buddy, but yeah. <laughs> yeah just get tested. That's There's cheaper ones. There's like uh, maybe $50 or $100, and it's worth it. Like, if you don't have as many partners as me, that, you know, I have a bunch of partners on set. But if you if you have if you're seeing someone and you you start seeing someone new, yeah, just get tested. I, I think it's good for you and it's good for your partner. So from your perspective, how do you think the Japanese society sees the AV industry and the AV actresses? Positive, negative? How has it changed? I think uh, so. One thing that I did experience is before I went into this industry, I did like. Uh, appearances on TV shows just as like an extra or like um, side game drama like those like reenactment things mm -hmm. yeah really dumb but anyways once I joined the industry and I contacted my previous um, talent agency they're like oh no once you're d you join that you can't do it it's the same for Japanese you kind of get barred from other entertainment stuff so even if like a, a Japanese person a nor like everyday person is okay with actresses or their job doesn't bother them the higher ups the producers of like the entertainment industry and the sponsors do have a big issue with it so we are kind of um, stigmatized in that way for an everyday japanese person i think rather rather than a negative opinion i think it's more so like they just don't know and japanese people i feel as a whole are a little bit less aggressive than westerners so if they don't know about it they usually just keep their mouth shut whereas like western viewers are like no, everything's bad, I know everything, even if they don't know anything about it, and they'll be more vocal about it. Um, I've never been, like, discriminated against, like, I, when I meet people who aren't in the industry, and they're like, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I, I do porn. They're never like, what? They say, you're lying. <laughs> uh, they're never mean about it, though. Uh, but I, I can't speak for all Japanese, I'm not, like, the queen of Japan, like, I don't know everyone's opinion, but I would say that it's a little bit less aggressive, at least from what I've seen, um, than it is in America, or, like, in Western, mm -hmm. at least America, that's with Western porn actresses, I'm not saying everyone, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but most of the image that we people have of a porn actress is like plastic surgery and lip fillers, makeup like up to here, and they don't look like a, they look like a porn star. Like they have a very specific look, whereas like Japanese AV actresses don't look that way. Most of them like just very casual on their days off, and they kind of have kind of more demure personalities, like very friendly or just kind of quiet. And I think that makes them easier to be accepted by Japanese society rather than like in America if someone's like you know like boobies out to here and you know I, th I think that's a big factor in people's re reactions or receptions of actresses in Japan would you say that's actresses. kind of one of the biggest cultural differences in regards yeah I think so yeah I think it's I think it's nice I mean I think there's mer uh, like positives to both like if you wanna, if you're into that, like go for it. But in Japan, I don't think it'd go over very well. There are actresses who do get really a lot of work done, and they're. I see the mean comments all the time. They're like cyborg, gross. Like they have no confidence. They prefer more natural look for sure. Mm -hmm. So, do you think you're gonna? Since it has been two years ish mm -hmm. for you in the industry, how has it been so far? Are you gonna continue mm -hmm. for long? You mentioned that you can potentially go you know, for a long time, mm -hmm. but people don't stay in the industry forever. Right. What is your plan? I will stay, I will continue doing it as, as long as I get offers, right? Like I enjoy the work, so I don't really feel the need to retire. Um, but it's definitely not, again, it's not a sustainable career. So I do need to do other things like working on my YouTube channel, working on producing on the side and just other things. Um, but when do I plan on leaving the industry? I don't know. I mean, once, once I stop getting offers, I would love to do it as long as I could. Have you had any regrets getting into the industry or, you know, if you had another opportunity to kind of go back, I mean, I, I guess it's just an assumption, would you have chosen a different path? or I wouldn't have changed my path, but um, I do think about like 
what I would have done differently in my life. I would have studied Japanese sooner and um, when I joined the industry and I made like my June Love Joy accounts, I deleted my uh, my personal SNS account or social media accounts and I regret deleting those. I was just so worried about like weirdos on the internet finding my stuff and like maybe posting, I have siblings or like I didn't want anyone like my family to be involved. I just out of respect for them. I'm not embarrassed of my work but I don't, I think that weirdos on the internet will do anything. And so I deleted my social media and all of those photos and I do regret that because I don't have any of those photos anymore. As a next step, would you want to try, like, this is something, this mm -hmm. different type of genre that you want to try or you actually want to move into, like, non-porn acting, etc. Mm -hmm. any, like, plans I, for you? I studied professional acting for eight years, like high school and college, so I'm, I'm really good at acting, I can say that uh, with confidence, but I can't like do things unless the higher-ups will accept like a porn a, a currently active porn actress I know if I retire then they're a little bit more forgiving um, I would love to do any of that right now I'm really focused on opening up a cat shelter um, in Japan and just like working with like yeah I know it's weird them working with like other cat shelters in Japan um, I don't really regret going into the industry but I do think that the timing is like again my earnings have been cut to 10% and that is scary because I'm the there's no one else to like support me financially. Cut to ten percent. Cut by ten percent. No, cut by ninety percent to ten percent. So it, it hurts. Yeah, it's scary because again, there's no one supporting me financially, and if I don't work every single day, I might not be able to pay my rent, which is you know I mean I, I save money like a responsible adult, but this job isn't forever, and uh, yeah, it can get kind of scary. I would like to continue doing it, but again, piracy is a big factor in whether or not I can continue getting work. So people, no piracy. Yeah, no piracy. Yeah. Just don't even watch it. If you don't have the money for it, don't even watch it. <laughs> it's fine. Mm -hmm. You'll survive. Um, one thing I do have to, um, what is it, a kind of negative thing I'm dealing with right now is I'm, I've lost a lot of weight and there are some people who are like, oh, June Lovejoy is too fat, like Japanese standard, which is fine. And too fat, I don't like fat chicks. And, and right now I'm working out, not for them, but like I'm working out and I'm actually losing a lot of weight and my agency is like, stop. And my fans are like, stop. So it's really weird for me to be told like, don't lose weight. But in like a society where like slender and like thin is like to be, what is it, sought after and the most beautiful like beauty standard. That is something I'm dealing with right now. I don't really know how to handle that. Why are they telling you to stop losing uh, weight? Because I'm, um, my genre is chubby yeah yeah that's my and I have a very big butt and mm -hmm. that's my selling point which is embarrassing to say to you no but problem. yeah so if I lose that kind of chubbiness yeah. then I become like slender like all other uh, foreign actresses because there's not a lot of chubby actresses um, and a lot of fans are like no that's why I, I like you because you are chubby and I like that about you so I don't really know what I'm supposed how, to do how do you feel about that actually yeah. because are you are you losing weight because you just naturally lose weight or because you want to lose weight or because you want to exercise mm -hmm. and you happen just to be losing weight? I, I don't hate my body at all and I never have. I used to play rugby and I like moving around even on set. Like I have a lot of physical stamina and right now I'm just working out because I mean it's coronavirus and I can't really do anything else. In America if I was like I'm losing weight everyone would be like yay but in Japan it's like they would be yay but my fans are like no and my agency is like stop. So really weird. It's kind of weird psychologically for me. It is. Like yeah. people who support me are like, don't lose weight, and the people who don't like me right now are like, oh, June's slimming up. Like, oh, looking good. Mm -hmm. so. But the thing, like for anyone, like don't care too much about people's opinions. But my job is selling to my fans, so I do have to be respectful of their opinions to an extent. Is there something that you wish you knew before entering the industry? Oh. I did, I did think going into the industry that I wouldn't sell, at least for like the first two years. I thought I would be like underground. I, my, my debut film made the top one rank for like weeks. It kept, it kept selling and I didn't think I would be well received. So it's kind of a weird answer, but I, I wish I would have known that there is a, a market or a, what is it? Yeah, market for white actresses chubby white actresses in the industry and just to be a little bit more confident going in because I was like oh I'm just going to do this like on the side and I have to be careful I'm not going to get that much work and uh, it's probably not going to pan out but other than like being surprised about something on set there's not really anything that like I wish I would have known everything's like pleasingly like oh uh, pleasantly surprising 
but nothing where I'm like, oh, I should have been more prepared. Okay, yeah, I guess it's maybe because you had your expectation quite low, and then it just was better how it turned out. True, I didn't set my standards very high there. The bar it's was all about the yakuza. Low. I I did think. Yeah. But would you would you recommend yeah. this industry to you know other girls who are interested in um, getting to the industry, or what type of people would you recommend and would you not recommend? So I get a lot. That's probably my most common answer. Besides, do you have any uncensored films? Or my most common question. And uh, it's a hard no. I would not recommend the industry. And I do um, promote my industry on my own YouTube channel, like sharing people's experiences. But the re like I have a lot of messages from young girls who are like, June, I'm I'm attending college and just seeing you so happy and makes me want to quit and just join the industry. And the amount of work that we can get is fixed. And it's not something you can do forever. Um, you can be sexually liberated and like share your sexuality online or even make your own films. But in this day and age, there's only fans. You don't have to join the industry. And you, c I don't think you should really throw away your life. I, I'm not saying that in a negative way. I like what I'm doing. But I think there's maybe like a 5% chance that you'll actually be able to make it. And the amount of things that you're throwing away in order for that small chance, I don't think it's worth it at all. So I, I say very openly, and it throws a lot of people off, but I say don't, I don't recommend the industry at all. You're throwing away too much. And unless you're like completely set on working every single day and you're okay with throwing away all the other options, don't join. Especially don't, don't stop going to college. That's weird. Don't. I went to college. I mean, I'm not using anything I learned there, but it's good to have it under the belt. The reason why I say no isn't because the industry is bad, it's how it's perceived and how the person will be perceived for the rest of their life. So yeah, if you, like, is the industry fun? Do I feel loved? Do I feel safe? Do I feel respected? Yes, absolutely, 100%. But after the, after I leave the industry, if I wanted to go even like work at a convenience store, I feel like I'll run into problems, like even just doing like a basic part-time job. And I don't think it's worth it for some, like, everyone. Not everyone can make it, just like in Hollywood. I know totally different, but not everyone can make it in Hollywood. But if you fail in Hollywood, you'll still be able to work other jobs. If you fail in porn, you don't have many other options. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and I, I think people are a little bit weird on the internet, where if I share positive experiences or other people on my channel share positive experiences, it doesn't fit their narrative that, like, oh, porn is bad, oh, degrading, dehumanizing, scum. We can still share our positive experiences and you can still talk about the negative effects of porn. Like, we don't live in a vacuum. There's, they can both be true. Like, what, eating too much sugar is bad. Watching too much porn is also bad. But just because, you know, there's negative effects of porn, does, and there are people who are sex trafficked, like in Korea or other countries, doesn't mean that we're all sex trafficked and suffering. So I, I just wish people would understand that. Mm -hmm. What would you consider is the biggest misconception of the AV industry in Japan. I think that we're, um, we're all being forced to do it and we don't actually like sex. It's weird because like guys will be like, I feel so bad for the women having sex, but it feels good, it's fun, and we're also kinky as hell, so why do you, why do you feel bad for us? And they're like, oh, because women, like they don't actually want to do that. And it, I'm like worried about that person's girlfriend. Like they think that, you know, women don't want to have sex. Well, I do like, uh, talk with my fans a lot about that and I would like to speak more openly about sexuality because I know it is hard for other women to talk about it and it can be very embarrassing or there are risks like if they're too open maybe it can affect like their social life or their life um, at work so I don't mind being like open about it you know I'm already doing a job that most people don't respect anyway so if I'm like yeah no we, we like it I feel I, I'm kind of happy that I can give those people a voice and they don't have to out themselves that they're like you know they like sex too. But yeah, it's a weird thing to think that people don't, like women don't like sex. That's really <laughs> weird. It's scary. Well, thank you very much for, <laughs> you know, doing the interview with us today. I think it was yeah. amazing. Like, you, you know, you. learned so much from okay. you about thank like you. the industry, about yourself. Mm -hmm. And to be honest, when I reflect back, there are times, most of the time, I don't mm -hmm. really know much. Yeah. Um, maybe a lot of people are curious, but then we don't know what's the proper question to ask right. or um you know we don't know how the industry really is right. so we really appreciate that you could share that yeah, with your us. questions were amazing <laughs> i'm glad i want to share as much as possible so thank you so much for having me yeah so thanks for taking the time with us today thank you thank you <laughs>